One of my recent projects is that I want to set up a security camera in my hotel room and be able to monitor it via the app on my phone. There are a few reasons why I wanted to do this. One of which is that I have a pet that I wanted to monitor when I was out of the room. And then the other reason is I wanted to actually monitor the room to make sure no one was coming into the room when they're not supposed to. There's really only two pieces of hardware that I need. One is the camera, for which I chose the WiseCam version 3.0 because they are relatively cheap at 32 US dollars and then they're super easy to operate. And the other piece of hardware I need is a travel router. For this video, I'm going to be using the GL iNet 300M Mini Smart Router. This guy is extremely small and portable and you just need the router and then connect it to a power source via a micro USB cable. It costs around 30 US dollars, so they're quite inexpensive. Why do you need a travel router? This is because the WiseCam cannot connect to the Wi-Fi network that has a captive portal page. You know, that landing page that you get first when you try to connect to a hotel or a cruise ship Wi-Fi. This is where the user has to enter their login credentials and then accept the terms and conditions and so forth. The reason the WiseCam cannot connect to this type of network is that the camera has no web browser interface that allows the user to complete those forms. The travel router just makes it a lot easier to set up because you can go through the setup process through the router and then use it to connect all your other devices. So let's set up the travel router. The first thing you got to do is connect it to power via a micro USB connector. Once you see the two outer lights stay on, then the router is ready. And from a computer or phone, connect to the router, which is acting as a Wi-Fi access point, and it's listed on the back label. So for me, it's called GLMT300N-V2 something something. And then once it asks for the password, give it the password that was also on the back label of the device. Then in the browser, go ahead and type in 192.168.8.1, which is the address for the router setup page. And so here you can see that you are connected to the setup page. You're gonna be asked for the setup language, which I'm gonna use English. And then you're gonna be asked to set up an admin password. I'm going to type in the router's default password because I don't wanna have to remember another password. But then unfortunately using the router's default password was denied, um, which is good because it's probably a bad idea anyway. So go ahead and type in actually a different password for the admin. Now we see the main page of the router setup, which gives us no real info as we have not connected to any networks yet. We can click on the word scan in the repeater section here and look for a Wi-Fi network to join. When the router has completed scanning the available networks, click on the SSID selector to find the network you want to join. Here, let's select the JW Marriott guest because the blue monkey lives a posh life. And go ahead and click join. When the router comes back, you may notice that it says no internet connection. Find new networks to reconnect. This made me think that the router didn't work, but wait, it actually did work. I'm gonna bring up a browser and go to any website. What I see is a scary warning that this connection is not private. And then it gives you a back button. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on the view the certificate link. And looking at the certificate, this all looks legit. So we should be okay, right? Well, I'm brave and stupid. So let's go ahead and press on by clicking visit this website. Now we see the Marriott Hotel captive portal page. So it makes sense now that the router did not see the internet and why the certificate had issues. So I'm going to enter my room number and my last name, which is the credentials required. And here you would enter similar information for other hotels or cruise ships. And now I get confirmation that I am authorized. I can bring up another tab in my browser and go to another website and this time it is successful. Now if we go back to the router's web page, we see that the main page is populated with information about the current connection, 
We are on the JW Marriott network. We have an IP address, we have a net mask, we have a gateway and a DNS server at level three communications. And you can feel free to change that if you want someone else doing your DNS instead of a level three. Uh, if we took a quick look at the other menus, we can change settings for the internet. We can add a guest network if you want. We can look at the clients currently connected to the router and in the past. We can update the router's firmware, which is probably a good idea. And then once it's finished downloading, I'm gonna go ahead and install it. And I'm gonna speed this up with the magic of editing because I don't want you to sit here for about four minutes that it took me to do this. And at the end, it tells you that you need to reconnect to the router as it has been rebooted. So that's fine. We're gonna give it a minute or two and then refresh the browser and we are back in. Now we can set up the WiseCam. First thing we need to do is connect the WiseCam to power via a micro USB connector. I bring this handy two port charger in my kit. So I have both devices powered by it. And then I need to pull out the base stand so you can see the micro SD card slot and the reset button. And you need to insert an appropriately sized micro SD card into the slot. Now we hop over to our smartphone to download the WISE app as this is the only way to connect to and control the WISE cam. Once I have the app up from the main screen, I'm gonna tap the plus on top here to add and then I'm gonna select add device and from there expand the camera section to find the WISE cam version three. And then basically just follow the instructions. I already connected the camera to power and see the red light. So I'm gonna hit the next button. We instructed to pull out the base stand and hold down the setup button. And uh, wait until you hear a chime followed by the ready to connect voice prompt and then click on the checkbox and then next. And up comes a pop-up panel that asks you to turn on your location to scan nearby Wi-Fi networks during setup. So go ahead and choose what you would like. I don't think I need them to know my location, so I selected no thanks to move on. Next is the select network page where you can select nearby networks if you had allowed it in the last page, which I did not. Uh, I have to do things the hard way, so I need to manually type in the travel router's SSID along with the password and then next. A QR code pops up now, and you need to show this to the WiseCam until you hear the QR code scanned voice prompt, and then click the box, and then next. The WiseCam will now connect to your travel router, and you should be able to see the new camera in the app on your phone. The first thing you can do is give your new device a name. I will call mine Travel Cam, because I am just so creative. Next, you can choose the plan your camera is using, the basic or cam plus. For this demo, I will choose the basic free plan. Maybe in the future, I will explore the cam plus features, but not for now. Then you are presented with things to try, which I'm gonna skip for now. And now the app will connect to the camera and then the camera is now ready to be used. Here we see the view from my hotel room where the camera is placed. And we see here that I already got an alert from the motion sensor. Now that I have my camera set up and connected to the travel router, I can be out and about and be able to get alerts when somebody enters my room, even though I have the do not disturb sign on my door. This setup is relatively inexpensive. My kit here, it's about $100, which includes the carrying case, the power adapter charger, the Wise Cam and the Mango Travel Router. One other thing to note is that using the Travel Router does slow things down on the network, but since I'm not streaming live events from the hotel room, that's not a big deal. The speed test from the hotel network without the router range from about 77 to 93 megabits per second. But then once I went through the Travel Router, the speed dropped to about 25 to 27 megabits per second. For a guide of how to use a travel router on a cruise ship, watch this video here. Make sure that you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. 
thanks for your time and happy hunting.